Hey everyone, so it seemed like after my last Zangoose and Obstagoon video, a lot of people wanted to see some additional footage and I was able to pull off some pretty interesting plays. So we're gonna showcase those for you. And obviously sometimes these rely on certain boosts to win them, but I thought these are some pretty hype matches. The team I'm using is the same as my last video. So if you haven't saw that yet, I'll link that video down below. All right, so in this first matchup, we're, it's gonna be a pretty ridiculous one. So I'm just gonna start off with a bang right here. All right, uh, Swampert versus Swampert mirror matchup. Usually what I do here is I bring in my Swampert to, or bring in my Obscune to catch a Hydro Cannon if I have CMP. Unfortunately, I do not. So therefore, I'm gonna have to actually swap to my Obscune before I get hit with the Hydro Cannon. Um, and because I know they're gonna get to it before me anyway. Um, now I was able to draw a Scavalier. This is a pretty good situation because now I could get rid of Scavalier, which is a huge threat to Zangoose in the back. Um, and they're now within a Hydro Cannon away, but they have energy and they have a shield advantage, so this is gonna be uh, really tricky for me to deal with. Uh, but let's see what we do. All right, and it's gonna be a Mega Horn too, so that's actually gonna hurt quite a bit because now I'm pretty much within one Hydro Cannon uh, from getting taken out uh, by the opposing Swampert. Um, I have a little bit of an energy lead, so I know I should be able to get to this next Hydro Cannon beforehand. And this is probably gonna force a shield from my opponent. Um, but yeah, this is not going to be great. Um, I'm thinking they might have, I don't know, maybe like a Registeel in the back or something, something they really don't want to match up against this Swampert. Um, so I'm going to come in with my Zangoose and just farm up some energy. I'm just going to go pretty much just Shadow Claw down. Um, however, I'm down completely out of shields and I'm getting hit by another Hydro Cannon, so it's going to be very tricky. They have a shield up. Um, Zangoose not tanky. It's going to be a Cresselia. So this actually. It's gonna be rough. I pretty much need a double boost to really win this, and they don't shield the first one. I get a one boost, okay. Uh, we're gonna go with that, they're gonna shield, and then I get the second boost. And then uh, this is literally my only win condition right here, and I'm able to finish it off. If you watched my previous video on this lineup, you might remember me saying there's a line that I just can't beat with this team. The only kind of teams that are really hard to deal with are like double Charmer teams with uh, Charizard. Um, yeah, that's probably one of the hardest teams to beat, and I don't think it's beatable with the team. And I faced that team quite a few times. It was actually my friend CCO that created that line in a previous season. So let's see how I do in this clip. All right, so going into this, once I see the Charizard, I'm like, all right, there's probably a 50% chance that this is gonna be the team. And I see the Tokus. All right, so it's not gonna be good. I need to stay in obviously in this matchup because I can't switch in Obscoon nor um, Zangoose. So I'm gonna just drop Hydro Cannons and let's see if they shield. Um, usually they eventually shield. Surprisingly, they didn't shield here, so that's not bad. Um, so what I'm going to do right here is soak up some damage with Zangoose and then try to Shadow Claw down. Even though they didn't shield here, it's still going to be tricky because they have that Clefable in the back. And Clefable is going to do quite a bit of damage. Um, so recognizing that they're probably they have a better matchup with Charizard against Zangoose, um, they're going to bring that in so that they could clear out that matchup with Swampert later. Um, I am going to shield right here and the main reason behind this is because if I don't shield here I'm probably going to die with at least one shield unused because Clefable is not going to be able to gener generate enough energy to throw two charge moves So he has a two shield advantage with a Clefable um, And then I have a pretty weakened Swampert at this point and I also have Obscune So what I really need to do at this point is get rid of both shields and hopefully I can get to a Hydro Cannon And luckily I do just in time so I'm gonna drop this Hydro Cannon, hopefully they, he shields, and then my opponent does. Now I just gotta go straight for the gunk shot, and um, this is actually a really scary moment because if it's gonna be a Moonblast, I could get debuffed, and it is. Luckily I didn't get an attack debuff, otherwise there's probably no way I could win this match. Um, but I wasn't debuffed, and now I can land the gunk shot and take out the Clefable. So literally probably one win condition in the, against that lineup, and I was able to pull it off in that one. Um, but I would say 99% chance I usually lose that line, so um, it's not a reliable uh, strategy per se. All right, so going into this matchup, a lot of people were like in my comments, like, oh, well, how do you do with fighters and stuff in my last video, um, especially Lucario, right? Um, so let's let's see how Lucario does. Um, Swampert uh, obviously is going to struggle if the Lucario is going to shield. Um, the biggest issue is, and it's a power punch one, so it's actually even harder to deal with. Um, like my shields won't help too much here, um, but I'm going to shield and then this Lucario is going to start doing a lot of damage. Um, 
but the big thing is the second super effective from this obscure too so um, and luckily i was able to get a boost as well um and then now i have zangus and then zangus um, with the shield can finish off swamper especially with the energy lead um so yeah so like i mentioned lucario is actually not that bad and not that hard to deal with um if they're not running power punch it's even easier because they're running close combat so they can't spam out those charge runs as quickly and zangus can um finish off everything else um okay so uh these are going to be some matchups where zangus is just kind of uh going off towards the end and really closing out some matchups um and as you can see sometimes i get a boost sometimes i don't um in the one against double charmers i didn't really get a boost at all but um it didn't seem to matter so um what i do against articunos is i tank the icy wind so that um and then i swap out instead of dropping the next hydro cannon uh because i don't want to do debuff damage um, this way i still have a little bit of energy on my swamper um and the obstacle is pretty bulky um and they're gonna swap in their swamper right here uh it's a pretty good matchup for my opponent because um my obstacle is doing very little damage and unless i'm getting any boost from it um, i'm going to continue to do very minimal damage um, and then right here this is actually kind of tricky because they could probably pretty much just farm down um, with mud shots so that's why i quickly go for a swap with swamper to really force a shield for my opponent um, and then i get the shield so now i'm at a two to zero shield advantage uh, which is pretty solid uh, for me um, however the swamper probably going to get to another hydro cannon uh, but they actually choose to swap out um, it's not a terrible situation so i'm gonna just uh, try to land another hydro cannon and i unfortunately cannot get to it um, so i'm gonna bring in zangus just throw some shadow claws throw a night slash to really whittle down this articuno and then um the bigger issue is really zangus has to deal with the swamper and something else in the back so let's see what they have. Um, it's going to be uh, Swamper. I'd luckily uh, swap in Obscune because I remember that this um, Swamper had some energy uh, left before. So now I feel like I'm in a decent spot, um, especially because they swapped in Swamper. So I'm assuming they have something weak to Registeel. I got the boost and this close combat is going to hurt. Um, I still have a shield though. So even if I didn't get the boost, uh, it would be fine. Um, but I'm going to shield this up and then just Shadow Claw down and I'll take it out. So again... Zangus uh, can really go off if you have it in the right situations. All right, uh, very favorable lead for me um, right here. And so let's just kind of see how it plays out. Um, I'm gonna go straight Earthquake right here. Um, a lot of times Registeels don't really shield this. Um, and even if they do, I still have Obscure and Zangus that can do decent against Registeel in situations as long as I have a shield. Um, all right, they go in with the Lapras. Um, so this is kind of tricky. Um, so I'm gonna swap in Obscure um, oh, it's not that tricky, actually. This is a pretty solid matchup for Obscune. Um, it'll just depend a lot on what my opponent has in the back. Um, so Obscune, just spamming out the Night Slashes. Um, and honestly, Counter probably does uh, um, pretty solid on its own, too, even without the Night Slashes. Um, I'm going to throw this one and maybe force a shield or just finish it off. Um, so they're not going to shield. Um, I do get a boost right there. Um, so now this is kind of tricky because... Um, Polyrath is actually really solid against my team. Um, it's better if I have a Swampert matched up against it, but um, my Swampert's pretty low at this point. So I'm in a kind of a tricky situation. All right, so I'm gonna charge up extra, see what I can do, um, try to bait out a shield here. I am able to get a shield and then land a close combat. Close combat is would come close to finishing off this Polyrath. They do double shield and I quickly go for a swap to my Swampert. Now all the debuffs are cleared. And then now I can come back in with uh, Zangus. The good thing about Polyrath is because, um, and they're trying to kind of soak up uh, charge move right there. But the good thing about Polyrath is because it's only doing mud shots, it's doing very minimal damage. And then they bring in the Registeel, um, maybe probably hoping to draw some energy. Um, but I got energy still left for the close combat. And I actually got a boost right there too. But even without the boost, still got a shield left. Um, and yeah, Zangus was able to sweep again towards the end. All right, going against my friend Valor Ash, a very great player. Uh, top player the biggest thing when i saw his lead is i was hoping he might have um, not seen my video yet and uh, i don't think he did or he just felt confident with his backline because um, usually if people are aware then they're going to just like double shield their togekiss because they know what's coming next um so he actually lets both go which is pretty solid and so what i'm gonna do right here is probably swap out to zangus do some extra damage um because the mud shots aren't gonna do enough and then now i have a little bit of energy lead and hoping that I took out the biggest threat which is charm um, of course, if they have like a Scavalier, it could be tricky. Um, and then now I'm going against the Registeel. I'm going to bait with this Night Slash. And 
happens. Uh, he doesn't fall for the bait. I do get a boost though. So now I'm going to just throw another nice slash because at this point, he's got to be really worried about a close combat. Um, he does shield. And so I'm going to shield right here. It's probably going to be flash cannon, um, but that's fine. I, I need a shield because I got debuffed. And then we throw another close combat and see if he shields or not. Um, he does shield again. So, uh, so at this point, it's just a race to get to close combat before he can get to another flash cannon. And I was able to outpace him there and uh, take out the red steel. The big thing is, what does he have in the back? Um, probably something that might be weak to Zangus, and it's a berserker. And can I finish it off? Close combat was able to uh, get the job done. So, um, GG's to him right there. So this video obviously highlights Zangus a lot. However. Obstacoon is also really strong in this lineup, so I'm going to have some pretty interesting footage with Obstacoon uh, pulling some interesting things off. Alright, um, again, Togekiss in the lead, not a great situation for my team, so I'm going to have to just throw these Hydro Cannons. I hope they don't shield, um, so they do shield one, um, but hopefully I could uh, draw a shield on, uh, or land the second one. Um, but I'm going to shield uh, because the Aero Ace would take me out right there. Um, even Ancient Power would kind of put me really low. Um, unfortunately, they actually shield, so I'm going to have to come in Zangus and try to finish the job off. Um, the main reason is because Mud Shots won't do enough damage to Tokus, so I'll just get farmed down from there. Um, but the Shadow Claws are going to hit pretty hard just because of how high Zangus' attack is. Um, but I'm pretty much whittled down quite a bit at this point. I'm going to go straight close combat right here. And this close combat will do uh, a decent amount of damage. And um, the main reason is because I'm not going to be able to get to two charge moves, so I'm going to go with the harder hitting one. And Hydra Cannon is going to have to finish me off anyway. All right. Um, right there, I'm going to get finished off by this Hydro Cannon, so I'm going to have to counter down with Obscure and just hope that there's something that it could deal with in the back. I end up getting hit by another Hydro Cannon, so not a great situation for me. Alright, let's see what I could do right here. And it is Melmetal. Actually, really bad situation. They actually bring in Tokis to do some extra damage. Um, I think they're trying to catch a charge move too, but it um, uh, didn't seem to work. But still, I'm very heavily damaged. I pretty much need a boost right here to take it out. And let's see if I get one. I do get a boost. And so I'm going straight for the next nice slash. And this should be able to take out the Melmetal. Um, They're probably really close to superpower at this point. But um, Obstagoon coming in clutch too. Obviously, um, you know, you have to kind of rely on boost sometimes for certain win conditions. But um, when you got two nice slashers, uh, that can happen pretty often. All right. So Zangu sa uh, safe swap or uh, into... Um, Gear Chain is not great, and then they come in with the Obscoon. So even though Obscoon has a great matchup, what I'm going to do right here is try to force two shields. Uh, so I'm going to drop a Night Slash and then go for the close combat and see what they do. So it's a very scary situation for um, Obscoon because we get hit by a close combat they're done for. Um, so I'm going to force two shields right from them. Um, however, uh, this, this Obscoon has a lot of energy, and um, Swampert doesn't have the best matchup against Obscoon either, um, especially one with energy. So I'm being put down really low at this point. So what we do is go for an Earthquake and then come in with my own Obscoon to counter down the opposing one. Um, and so I bring it in right there and then finish it off. I have a little bit of energy. Um, and then the fact that they're coming in with uh, Giratina makes me think that they're even weaker to Obscoon uh, with something else in the back. And so um, I'm just kind of play out and see how this goes. Um, at this point, I might have it might have been better for me to shield, but I was kind of worried about Chrysalia in the back. So um, this is going to put me really low. I have very little health on my Swampert as well. And it's a Drachi. So a uh, very interesting pick for Ultra League. Um, King made a video on it recently, so feel free to check that out. Um, but this uh, confusion damage is just getting resisted really hard by Obscoon, and I'm able to get to another nice slash uh, without even needing to use a shield. So, um, again, Obscoon just very, very tanky in that regard. All right, so uh, Gyarados, very tough lead. Um, it's going to be a Registeel, and um, this is always a good matchup for Zangus, especially with energy. If you land certain baits, you can do pretty well. Um, they don't go for the bait, so I'm going to go for another Night Slash. Hopefully they shield the next one, because usually with the boost, people will shield. And let's see if they shield or not. And they don't shield. Very interesting. So at this point, I'm just going to go straight Night Slash, because at, they're so low that there's not, not really any need for me to go close combat. And then I'm probably going to double shield right here. Yeah, so I'm going to shield again. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get to the Night Slash in time. And they go for a quick swap to Gyarados. Um this nice slash is going to do a ton of damage um but luckily they're able to land a uh, cruncher on me before i could land the second night slash i'm gonna come in with my swampert um mainly because 
uh, yeah, mainly because my ops, the red seal is low enough that my ops can finish it off, and um, yeah, I'm just, and then I'm gonna switch in my ops right here because now I know they can't land a hydro can or a hydro pump on me. Let's see what they have. Oh, a charmer, fantastic. Going for straight the gunk shot. Gunk shot is definitely the better move to go with this lineup, and I think just in ultra league in general. Um, just because you do have the ability to almost one shot um, a lot of the fairies. And then this Registeel very low um, can finish it off with just Obscoon. Um, so Obscoon coming in pretty clutch. Um, a lot of people say like, oh, how do you deal with Charmers in the back and stuff? Like once the Swampers done, you have no options, but Obscoon is the option right there. All right, Polyrath lead, very tough uh, for my lineup. Uh, so big thing is I just need to land the bait properly for me to stand a chance. And I'm going in and going for the Earthquake. Hopefully they don't double shields. Um, if they do, I'll definitely be in a little bit of trouble. Um, so they don't. And then I'm going to let this Dynamic Punch go because... Um, okay, and then now I'm swapping in these Angus. And the main reason why I do this is because if there really is a Charmer or something in the back um, that is really strong against um, my Zangus, um, it's not going to be a good situation. So... Um, I want to keep that Swamper alive a little bit in that regard. All right, and then I let this go because I saw my Swamper. Um, and yeah, let's see what happens right here. So I'm gonna go straight for the Hydro Cannon. Hopefully I can land it. At this point, I still have no idea what the third Pokemon is. I'm thinking maybe it's the Giratina, uh, Cresselia. It's a Tokus. Um, so again, I need to get rid of the shield so I can land the Gunk Shot. They do shield. This is huge. Now I can go straight Gunk Shot. And potentially take out the Sokis. Um, they go for a charge move, really scares the Ancient Power, and they get a boost. And fortunately, it wasn't. Otherwise, there was no way this Gunk Shot would be able to take out the Sokis. All right, and then land the Gunk Shot, take out the Fairy in the back. All right, so it would not be fair to me to just showcase all these great matches where I'm getting all these boosts or pulling off these ridiculous wins without some losses. Um, realistically, uh, no one's winning at the rate that um, sometimes is shown on YouTube. Um, so I'm gonna show you some losses and some misplays by me or just some teams that are just hard counter my team. All right, usually this is a pretty good situation for me because um, Zangoose with the energy lead against Registeel uh, is really solid, especially if you can land one bait. And so not only did I bait out a shield, I was also able to land a close combat. So this is a really good situation for me. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, I'm just gonna go straight farm down. Nope, I messed up. I had two nice slashes while I'm being fainted out right here. And uh, at this point, they have a um, Corselia and Giratina in the back. So literally this is one of those situations where Zangus could have swept the entire team. But unfortunately, because of that misplay, uh, that's definitely not going to happen. There's no sweep coming on my end. Uh, there's probably no win coming on my end either. As you can see, uh, Cresselia is going to do really well against Obscene with shields down. And uh, even without debuff, um, uh, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to lose. It's pretty hard. And then uh, Swampers not going to do well against um, Cresselia nor Giratina. So um, I pretty much know I'm, I've lost at this point. Only thing I could do right here is just farm down and land two earthquakes, which is unlikely. Um, and yep, and so they're going to throw the charge move, and nothing I could do about that. So big misplay by me, but um, like I said, I'm not winning at some ridiculous rates. Um, there's plenty of times where I'm making mistakes too. So let's see, see, see some other matchups where I'm losing as well. All right. Um, not a terrible situation for me, but these matchups are always kind of rough because um, I know that I probably have to expend two shields if I really want to win this, um, especially if they don't fall for the Hydro Cannons. If I go straight Earthquake and land it, then obviously that flips the match, but if they shield it, then I'm in a terrible situation. Ooh. All right, Togekiss, uh, not great. What I do right here actually is I bring in Obstagoon because Obstagoon um, has the ability to... Uh, Potentially land the gunk shot, but Togekiss got boost. <laughs> Boosted Togekiss against my team is there's literally nothing I could do. Um, even if they don't shield the Hydro Cannons, uh, there's nothing I could do. So they shield the second one at this point. Literally nothing that the Zangos can do to beat the Scavalier and the Togekiss. So I can see the match right there. All right, going against Gramble. Um, so Gramble with Charm very deadly for my team. Gramble with Snarl can also be really tricky. 
and you're gonna see why in a second. So again, against Polyrath, um, kind of a tough Pokemon against my team, so I need to land this bait and then land the uh, Earthquake right after. So let's see if I can land that Earthquake, and I do. Um, so I do land that Earthquake, um, and let's see what happens right after this. So it's gonna be a Dynamic Punch. I know I could survive it. So um, this is gonna be an Ice Punch. I know I could survive this as well. So. Um, I'm gonna just throw the Hydro Cannon and take out this Polyrath. All right, um, now I'm in a tricky situation. Um, if this was Charm Gramble, I would have been in a bad situation. Um, but Snarl, so I'm thinking, okay, uh, might be a little play right here. Um, I overcharged, but I didn't realize they were so ahead on energy. And also, even if I dropped the Night Slashes, it wouldn't be enough to take out the Gramble. <sighs> Shields down against Snarl Gramble. Not a great situation. This thing's gonna one shot Obscune. Um, honestly, with shields down, Obscune's probably better off um, going against a Charm Gramble than a Snarl one, because at least with Charm, you could get to a gunshot before they. Uh, well, actually, it'll probably be close before we get to a close combat. All right. And like I mentioned before, fighters usually aren't as bad against my team, except for Machamp. Machamp is actually really tough, especially if they're shielding their Machamps, because. Um, those cross drops just do a lot of damage just given how high Machamp's attack stat is and um, yeah and it's not weak to fighting like Lucario is or I don't know like a Scraggy or something so um, so you actually can't do super effective damage back to the Machamp with Obscoon um, while you're taking you know super effective damage from the Machamp. Alright so they double shield the Machamp really bad situation for me um, you know, I'm gonna have to bring in uh, Zangoose just because the uh, Shadow Claws will kind of chip away, but um, this is still gonna one-shot me even if, um, same thing, it would've one-shot the Obscoon too. Um, at this point, uh, yeah, Red Seal, no, no way to deal with that. Even with the Cross Drop, um, I still can't take it out before it gets to one focus blast. And that's GG, so Machamp is a very tough Pokemon to go against. I hope you all enjoyed that video. I know there was a lot of hype gameplay in the early parts, and maybe some people enjoyed seeing me get absolutely wrecked in the second half. But overall, this has been a super fun team for me to use in Ultra League. Thank you to all my patrons who are supporting this channel and my content creation. Like I mentioned in previous videos, if you would like to join my Discord, it is free for all, and I will be hosting some tournaments through it in the near future, so if you're interested, feel free to click on the link down below. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and share. So subscribe for future content, hit that notification bell so you know when I post a video right away, and I'll see you all next time.